Hello and welcome to Let's Talk SOC, a podcast series brought to you by SecureWorks, a leader in cybersecurity, focused on empowering security and IT teams worldwide to better prevent, detect and respond to cyber threats. I'm Professor Sally Eves, your host. Hi everyone and a warm welcome to Let's Talk SOC. A special feature today on the role of automation in threat detection and also threat response. And to dive into all the details, I'm delighted to be joined now by Elvis Hovor from SecureWorks. Welcome, Elvis. Thank you very much, Sally. I'm delighted to be here. Oh, fantastic. Such a timely topic area. And perhaps we get started just by finding out a bit more about you, Elvis, and your role at SecureWorks. Yeah, certainly. Um, so I'm a senior director here in the product management org. Um, for SecureWorks, um, my main you know focus is making sure we build out the XDR platform and uh, make sure it's performant for our customers. Superb, absolutely. And kind of taking that as our starting point, such a dynamic market we have right now, many changes coming together, many different vectors of change, I would say. And some of these challenges, I think automation is so essential to help negate the risk. Perhaps we could start from that. What are you seeing as, A, the key drivers, and then we can drill into how automation makes a big difference? Yes, yeah, certainly. Um, you know, I believe one of the biggest key drivers, um, you know, hasn't changed over years, right? There's always been a shortage of skilled professionals in cybersecurity. The ICS squared is recently did um, a workforce study that shows that um, the cybersecurity workforce gap is about is short of about 3.4 million people. This is staggering, uh, you know, which means that employees are most likely overwhelmed. Um, they're looking for help and streamlining um, the multitude of alerts that they have to deal with on a daily basis, right? Um, you look beyond that, there's also like the proliferation of t- security tools, um, an increase in cyber attacks, um, you know, and, and this kind of leaves our security practitioners in a constant state of fatigue. Another study from IDC actually states that, um, you know, um, security professionals are so fatigued and so tired and overwhelmed that um, they are ignoring about one third of all the security alerts. Um, And they're actually spending just as much time investigating false positives. One last thing that I would like to push in there also is that, you know, um, our adversaries um, or threat actors are creating exploits um, at machine speed today. So this new exploits coming out every day, Um, you know, practitioners have to deal with this, right? Think about all the alerts that they already have to deal with, all the integrations, all the multiple tools they have to jump through. And then the fact that the adversaries are coming at you even, you know, more than they used to before, um, it's a lot, it's very overwhelming, right? In the same way adversaries are using automation to build their tactics and techniques and adversary tools, we also have to do the same as defenders Um, to make sure that we can facilitate our defense. So, so true. I think what you said there, Elvis, just brings to the fore that we talk about like multi-layer security, don't we? But I think the multi-layers kind of vectors of risk you're really bringing to the fore there in so many different areas. So, A, we have the supply talent gaps in cybersecurity. Couldn't agree more. I think COVID um, kind of heightened that as well, particularly when it comes to diversity and security. There's been quite some interesting research there, too, showing how, for example, more like women in cyber who were showing real kind of love of role, you know, coming really, really strongly in that research, but actually propensity to churn from it was very, very high and, and you know, quite a difference, for example, um, with, with other demographics. So really interesting areas there, but also other things from a technical point of view, as you said there, about kind of male alignment across technology or things like tool sprawl or even vendor sprawl, for example, too. So lots of different levels to, to address there as well. But I also hope that actually, if we look at the dynamism of this space, perhaps we can attract more people in because, wow, if we get some of these better, so get some of these things you know, managed in a different way, what an amazing space to help make a difference and give people kind of agency to negate some of these threats too. So I'd love to maybe come back to that bit at the end as well, but so, so true. Lots of friction points at the moment to address automation and security right there as a priority to help do that. So perhaps we could drill into that a little bit more, particularly where we associate automation in security too. So I think traditionally it's more, um, you know, associated with SOAR, isn't it? But what do you see as a role more for an XDR proposition for extended detection and response? Where is the best fit there? Yeah, so, you know, you are right. Automation has traditionally been 
you know, associated with Sor. And I might even say rightly so. Um, the promise of Sor was that, um, you know, it was going to be able to, you know, apply predefined actions um, to contain and remediate issues, right? Um, freeing up operators, as we know today, the ones that are obviously um, overwhelmed um, to, you know, freeing them from like the manual operation so that they can focus on things that are, you know, more high level. Um, the reality, though, the reality though is this: um, it's been difficult for organizations to get their sore investments um, off the shelf, um, just because of the complexity and integration um, and setup that needs to go into it. For the most part, um, that has been a huge issue. Companies that have investments in log management tools, SIMs, just endpoint um, point products have to purchase like these additional capabilities in sore. Um, stitch them all together and hope that they have the expertise to make all of this work together, right? Um, you know, because XDR, on the other hand, integrates a wider range of products like endpoints, cloud applications, emails, and more, it is better suited um, to combine like the whole prevention, detection, investigation, and automated response um, capabilities to combat threats. Right. So it feels as though that in an XDR platform, it's a single platform where the integration and automation is all built through. It's easier for you to streamline that process um, and better use automation um, in that. Absolutely. So far more expansive. I love that. And the points you make there about kind of integration and visibility in many ways, I think that echoes what I hear, you know, working with many different organisations and not just in security, frankly, as well. It's a couple of the biggest challenges we have are improving integration, improving visibility, and also, frankly, reducing complexity as well. So I think it really supports that, that trajectory too. And as part of that, I'd love to hear a bit more about the evolution of automation within Secure Works yourself. So, you know, XDR, but also MDR point of view as well. How how has that grown and kind of what's coming next? Yeah, so um, it's great that you asked that question because we've also gone through a journey um, on our end to make sure that, you know, we are doing better for our customers. Um, if you remember, we transitioned from being MSSP, um, you know, um, an MSSP provider into being this, into an XDR, MDR provider. Um, and, and this means that, you know, what we used to do before where we could throw very quickly, just throw alerts over the fence to our customers um, so that the customers can go pull their own context um, has changed, right? Right now, we do have the telemetry, we do have the law, we do have the context that we need um, to be able to make, uh, you know, or, or to be able to pull more context into alerts filter it down, reduce the noise significantly, create investigations that have um, deep context just because of how much purview we have across all of these log sources, um, you know, before sending it over to our customers. So, you know, as part of this process, we've embraced automation as a core tenant of our XDR and MDR process to help drive this for our customers. It is critical, right? Because when you look at the challenges that we have, then that's the same that challenges that our customers have always had too. The sheer amount of like alerts that the SOCs have to deal with, uh, you know, you would definitely need some level of automation to make sure you're reducing the noise that's coming in. You are detecting early, you are prioritizing these alerts, and these are all functions that um, automation is able to kind of like speed up um, for an organization. But beyond that, we are always evolving, right? Um, and we are focused on using advanced um, systems powered by things like artificial intelligence and machine learning um, to help protect our mission critical operations for our customers. Um, we leverage machine learning to, to build some of our most advanced detectors within the space, uh, like our hands-on keyboard detectors. Um, the hands-on keyboard detector really is um, an ability for us to be able to um, score threat actors or identify threat actors who are performing very low level manual tasks 
um, on a host that you would typically not see, right? They're trying to behave like a regular human and all of that um, within the host. And so it's very difficult for you to see. So things like command line paths and some of it, um, things that they would do along those lines, we score them um, using machine learning for us to be able to detect better um, some of these threat activities that are going on. So that's a little bit of evolution and we haven't stopped yet. We are still going through um, building more capabilities around automation, but then focusing more on bringing machine learning and AI components into our platform. I love that. I love that. And the word like empowerment is basically ringing through my ears as you're describing that. Um, I really do think in so many different areas, so kind of reducing that overburden um, and the fatigue that you described, you know, throughout our conversation so far. And it is such a big point. And we're seeing a big kind of churn rate across the industry related to this. It's growing and growing. I totally agree with that. But also, for example, that scoring me mechanism, the low level threats that become bigger ones that can be quite in stealth mode for quite some time, making those more visible, helping to prioritize. It's really giving this empowerment and this agency to act. So it's so, so powerful. And I love what you were bringing in there about the use of AI and, AI and ML as well. Definitely see such a powerful trajectory there. Again, to get more granular, get more specific, but also filter away what we don't need to be seeing and giving that agency and empowerment to make those better decisions. So brilliant. Love that. Fantastic, Elvis. Thank you. And in terms of kind of this in action, have you got any examples you can share? Totally understand you're a bit with client confidentiality, et cetera, but maybe something we could kind of share with the audience now of this in action. You know, how have you worked with organisations to make a difference using automation in your solutions? Plus, of course, the power of your trusted partnership as well and the education piece you provide. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, I, I think I'll try and be as open as I can here and, and maybe even give you, um, you know, some metrics as to, to how we, we've been doing. So from a detection standpoint, and like I said, we use automation across detection, you know, prevention, uh, making sure that we can give our customers automated responses all across like their threat, um, threat life cycle. Um, from a detection standpoint, um, we are certainly better at detecting threats because we are leveraging a lot more automation um, in our in our in our process to you know enrich, correlate, um, group, and and prioritize the alerts that we are getting um, so that we can accelerate investigations overall. Um, automation and machine learning has helped us reduce um, the noise that we had in our platform. And I'm not talking from too long. Um, it's helped us reduce it by 45% again. So our lead volume has reduced by 45% when we focused a lot more um, in driving machine learning um, AI um, in our processes. And this has been super helpful. You can understand, you know, how much our SOC needs to work, how quickly they need to go through this to make sure that our customers are being uh, protected in a timely manner. So that is a significant amount if we are able to reduce that amount of noise um, through the process, because then we can focus on the things that are uh, really important. Um, from an investigation standpoint, um, we leaned in very heavily into automated investigations. Um, you know, the there's always the capability for us to use automations to uh, make sure that you know we are in um, we are in losing um, the context that we need. Like humans are always um, prone to make mistakes, right? If you can automate a process around investigations, um, the likelihood of it being consistent um, is higher. But beyond that, we also use um, automated investigations, something we call draft investigations, um, to be able to help prepare um, the context and the content that an analyst needs um, for them to be able to do their um, investigation. So before they sit down to start an investigation, we would have gone through using automation to go pick up all the context that's needed, um, all the alerts that are correlated, all the events that they need, put it together for them so that they have one single place to go um, and make a decision on an investigation. So that's a way that's speeding up significantly um, the output from our analysts. We always want to keep that human analyst in the, in the mix um, for when things are a little bit more complex and, and you need uh, some discernment. So that makes it easier for them to pick up those alerts and, and be quicker. From a response perspective, um, you know, there's obviously um, the faster remediation through like predefined playbooks that we have and, and containment, um, you know, playbooks that we have, that's always been great and that's something that we, we keep doing. Um, but our MDR service also offers 
um, automated response actions. Um, this is an ability for us to take remediation actions on behalf of our customers. And as you can imagine, this completely shortens the life cycle um, of a threat or an attack on a customer significantly. So um, this is something that we, we do for our customers also. Overall, um, you know, SecureWorks leaning into automation, uh, machine learning, and AI, we've seen a considerable improvement in speed and accuracy when we are triaging alerts, investigating incidents, and this has had a direct impact on our, you know, managed services customers, um, you know, most important metrics, yeah, like the time, their mean time to triage alerts, their mean time to resolve these alerts, and we are seeing significant improvements in that space for our customers, which makes them, um, I think, more confident in our, in our capabilities and abilities. Oh, absolutely. I was I, honestly, thank you. Such a range of examples there as well, which is so, so powerful and kind of as our ending point as well. I think it brings everything together so nicely. And the fact that the use of automation there is the holism of impact that it can bring. So right through the support you were mentioning there for, for analysts and in terms of giving them that active intelligence they need and taking away some of the some of the burdens we've talked about today as well and giving that in that kind of single pane of visibility you were describing as well, right through to areas like the remediation impact that you talked about as well so it literally is end-to-end -end in terms of security support I love that and the percentages they really do bring to the fore just the level of impact that you're having there as well in terms of speed and dressing the sophistication but also just the different vectors of change we've been talking about today that support across the process of doing that and ever more obviously in the AI ML field as well really powerful in terms of impact so brilliant to see that and you know I know we have to bring it to a close now as well I'd love to come back again another day to see the next stage in the evolution of, of automation in security with yourself and at secure works and bring more people involved in this too because i think what an exciting space to be in terms of as this moves forward as we negate some of these challenges is an impressive you know, impressive place to be to have agency to, to tackle well frankly some of the biggest challenges of our time affecting people families and big organizations and small ones alike so it's something that concerns all of us isn't it elvis so thank you so much for, for all you're doing in this field Sally, thank you so much for having me. It's been an absolute pleasure to, to talk to you um, about automation and some of what we're doing here at SecureWorks. I would certainly love to come back um, and tell us what some of the next steps we are, we are taking are in this space. Um, have a great rest of your day. Wonderful. Thank you, Elvis. And thank you all for watching and joining us on another episode of Let's Talk Sock. We'll be back soon looking at another area of security detection and response. Thanks for joining us.